Hi, my name is uh, Nitch Wadanasan. I'm just going to be talking about uh, chart review using LLMs. <clears throat> uh, so I really quick agenda slide. Uh, I'm going to go over what our goal has been. Um, so this is very prototype right now. Uh, the concept behind what we're trying to build, uh, some of the methodologies we're using, um, just show some examples, some things we've learned about, and then kind of get into just the overarching, what, what the pipeline looks like that we're building. So I didn't want to save the screenshot to the, to the end, I just wanted to show it right now. So this is, uh, <clears throat> this is what the app looks like right now. So version 0.0001. Uh, we, we, we set out to build a, a prototype uh, AI app to assist in the chart review process. Okay, so the underlying the assist part, right? We're not promising that this app is gonna get you, you know, the answers right away, but the idea really is to provide guidance to uh, the chart reviewer um, in, in, in kind of a, an assistive app. Um, <clears throat> so, it's a little small to see, but uh, this view really is a per patient view. And so uh, in, in chart review, typically, uh, there's a list of questions that the reviewer is trying to an answer, right? So with a list of patients. And they're systematically going through each question and looking at the EHR, EPIC, or what, whatever else. Um, and it's pretty much kind of like an art form, right? Every reviewer, if, if you're a nurse, a clinician, doing chart review, uh, you're going to kind of have your own style, expertise doing everything. So this really is, is curating uh, kind of knowledge from, from various uh, apps to complement that EHR chart reviewing experience. So, so the one bolded right there in the middle is, is we're trying to provide some guidance from a large language model if possible. Okay, so the concept that we uh, kind of behind, that we kind of set out to do is, uh, um, oh, what is it, because of the animation. So it, the beginning is you basically ask a question, right? So you're looking for, in, in this example, has the patient reported chest pain? Uh, and then typically you would search through those patient's notes. So in this, <laughs> in this visualization, there's 36 notes, so it could be anywhere from 10, you know, a few notes to hundreds of notes for that one patient, right? And then we want to display the results uh, right now just focusing on two ways. So there's many ways to, you know, display, dis you know, display the results. Um, we want to uh, first show, you know, pull out the relevant documents. So out of these 36 notes, just for example, what are the top three most semantically relevant to you know, the initial question, has the patient reported chest pain? And then, you know, magically, and this is the more interesting part, uh, what would be the LLM's response to that initial question? So here, just, just as an example, you know, the, the large language model could return something like, yes, the patient reported chest pain due to some evidence that, that it looked at before. So we're gonna kinda get into uh, a little bit how, how it works. Um, we've heard a little bit about retrieval augmented generation yesterday. Uh, this is also known as uh, in-context, um, like the in-context method. Uh, and basically what retrieval augmented generation it really is, is, is a way to introduce uh, new data that the LLM hasn't seen before, right? So like, for example, ChatGPT hasn't seen the patient's charts before, hopefully. Uh, it hasn't been trained on that data. And, um, and we can kind of uh, send it to the large language model in such a way that it could make inferences based on that data. Uh, I think the, let me see, the, the cit citation here is just, uh, I think RAG was introduced by the Facebook Meta AI team. That's their paper in 2020. And so this is how the, the concept was, was introduced by them. So just going back to our visualization, and so what, what are we really doing? Um, we're taking this, the patient's notes, uh, and we are splitting them into various chunks. All right, okay, okay so, so chunks could be either a, a length of, of, uh, of, of text, 
or you can split it by sentences. There's a lot, I'm gonna kind of skip, there's, there's many parameters uh, to this, uh, to setting this up, but in general, you would split the documents into chunks, and then you would apply an embedding model to uh, create a vector for every single chunk. And I think Sean actually, Sean Murphy has talked about this a little bit yesterday, but essentially we would uh, put all of those slices of text, all those chunks into a database, and then alongside that text, we would put the vector representation next to it. Okay, so RAG is really RAG, right? So the R stands for retrieval. So the first, the first part of RAG is basically retrieving the most relevant uh, chunks out of the database. Okay, so in this example, has the patient reported chest pain? What the first step you, you would do is you would uh, apply the same embedding model to that question and you would turn that question into a vector. So what you would have is you have a database with all of the patient's notes as vectors and then you have that question as a vector. So now you can actually do the, some magical math and uh, uh, calculate basically the distance between those, those, those vectors, right? And so the most, most uh, common one you'll see is like cosine similarity. And uh, in this example here, applying that and, and asking for the, what are the top three chunks, you're getting uh, you know, the, the three snippets out of you know, has the patient reported chest pain? So one document might say, I think it says, patient reports chest pain at visit, dot, dot, dot. Another document might say, pain of the chest region was reported, blah, 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 blah. and then uh, has family history of chest pain. So this is really just representing three different documents. It found three snippets that were semantically relevant to, the, to the, uh, some of the notes and documents that are in the database. So the A part stands for augmentation. And so what we're really doing here is we're taking those three chunks, the three text chunks, right? We don't care about the vectors anymore. Uh, we're taking those three chunks and we're putting them into the prompt uh, for the LLM. Okay, so the prompt, and I'll show you a really simplistic example in the next couple of slides, but uh, augmentation, so, this, so what's in that box right now is the prompt that you would send to the large language model. And it specifically says, use the following context to answer the question, has the patient reported chest pain? And then literally those three, you know, pasted values in there, right, one, two, three. And then of course, as you could guess, G stands for generation. And this is the part where the LLM is doing the synthesis, the interpretation, um, and here you have meta for, um, you know, their Llama 3, is, uh, LLM and OpenAI for ChatGPT. And of course, this applies to any other types of LLMs out there. So this is the really simplistic example uh, that, I, I, that I did. Um, so I think many, many of you here have used ChatGPT before. So if you actually went to ChatGPT and you asked the question with no context, has the patient reported chest pain? Um, it, it, hopefully it would probably tell you, it would have no idea what you're talking about, right? So it, it literally says the answer. Um, it, seems, it seems you might be referring to a specific context. Dot, dot, dot. However, since there's no prior context provided, I cannot directly answer whether the patient has reported chest pain, right? It's like, it's like pulling somebody, just a stranger walking by, and you're just asking them, has the patient reported chest pain? They would have no idea what you're talking about, right? But in the next slide, this is the augmented version, right? So I, just, I, I literally just copy and pasted the, the simple example to ChatGPT asking, you know, now use the following context, answer the question, and here's like three little chunks of snippets, right? And now it can, it can actually um, answer and say, yes, the patient has reported chest pain. You know, the context, patient reports chest pain at visit, confirms that the patient mentioned experiencing chest pain. So it's using its interpretation and it's using the new data that I sent to it along with the question to be able to make some kind of response. So you're probably wondering, so, so I'm kind of highlighting in red here, uh, it kind of leads into the next slide about healthcare data and LLMs, right? Like, I, should I really be sending PHI and notes and, and whatnot to the LLMs, right? Especially third-party LLMs. So these are kind of the two approaches we 
looked at when we were uh, um, standing this up at, at, at MGB. Um, on the left-hand side, uh, you probably heard about this yesterday, is about running the large language model or the entire stack just locally, right? So the, your, your data never leaves your organi organization's boundary. Um, this requires on-prem, on the premises hardware, so you have to purchase some hardware, CPUs, GPUs. Um, you have to have, of course, some system admin to configure those things. Um, but this is really good for prototyping, for research, et cetera, right? So this is really up our alley when we're doing this kind of proof of concept uh, development. Um, the third bullet here requires physical space. I really just put it this in here because a lot of organizations, including our organization, uh, has been moving to the cloud uh, for years. <laughs> and uh, it's really hard, right? When, when you get actually physical servers, it's like who's, who's gonna host it, who's going to, uh, maintain it, and where do, where do you put it, especially when we're moving everything virtually. On the right-hand side, uh, these are other considerations you can use besides just running uh, LLM locally. You could use a HIPAA-compliant um, like cloud resources. There's a famous a uh, acronym, I-A-N-A-L. I am not a lawyer, so I should say this, but uh, is, this is a gray area, but there's organization approved vendors, right, that have signed BAAs with your um, organization. So at, at MGB, we partner heavily with Microsoft. Um, and, and there's kind of two models, and there's other ones too. There's, you know, as, as there's other service models. But the two, one, the two of them here is um, you can rent cloud hardware, right? So you can actually rent GPUs and, and other uh, resources by the hour. Um, it's pretty expensive, super expensive, but it's kind of weighing the advantages and disadvantages of you know, purchasing on-prem hardware, having your GPUs having to be set up, but then you, there's, you know, there's a larger upfront capital expense rather than something you can turn on and off. And then the last one, which is a little bit more familiar to everyone, is just use the hosted APIs. So um, OpenAI, ChatGPT itself provides, you can subscribe to it, I don't think, I don't think it's you add some credits. Um, but basically, Microsoft Azure provides the same exact API. So they have a ho Microsoft Azure hosted chat GPT um, that is HIPAA compliant, and you basically just change the endpoints of where you're pointing to, you change you know, your, your key, and then um, you could use it there. Um, this, this was talked about yesterday. There was a recent article uh, published uh, only last week uh, talking about the retrieval augmented generation using ChatGPT uh, and for clinical trial screening for inclusion exclusion criteria. Uh, this was published in the New England Journal of Medicine AI. Um, and this, was, this is kind of work just starting to validate that the RAG model is a you know, a, a, a good place to start when we're uh, looking at this, this uh, work for chart reviews. Oh yeah, building the pipeline. So, so, so this is really just a simplistic kind of data flow diagram about how we're uh, building the various components to power this app. Uh, just really from left to right, it's that if you have if researcher has a, who has a new chart review project, um, we would basically load the notes for that patient cohort. So if they were re reviewing, uh, let's say 50 patients, we would try to collect all the notes, that you know, the relevant notes for those 50 patients and load them into this uh, you know, database that we have. Uh, those icons really represent, we have the ability to load from a notes repository that's that's organized in a database structure and also PDFs. So if you have the PDFs of those notes um, using this kind of the Postgres uh, scripts that we have, we can also load just directly from the PDFs files. Um, as I mentioned before, create embeddings and then push them into the vector database or vector enabled database. And lastly, kind of represented in purple are kind of like the components that are that are needed uh, for the app to work. So, uh, you know, after in, in parallel, after requesting a, a new chart review project, you would define 
the chart review questions that you're looking for. So if there's 20 questions that a reviewer has to answer, um, you would define it in, in, a, in a way that we've specified. Uh, fetching results. So you can see that this, the, <laughs> there's so many arrows that come out of fetching results. So this is basically fetching from the vector database to give me the most relevant uh, uh, documents. So I might want to see here, you know, fetch me the top 10 most semantically relevant documents in my search results. Uh, I might ask an LLM. So this is, in, in our case right now, we've used Llama 3 locally to ask the question, you know, does the patient have chest pain? See what the LLM, and, and then pass, you know, some of the data to, to it, see what the LLM says. Um, we have listed here, we haven't worked on it yet, but it's kind of planned that we can also fetch results from I2B2. So this is kind of the work that, that a lot of um, people here have talked about, where Jeff Griffin and Kavi have talked about um, other uh, APIs from I2B2, so you can pull data out that way, and then ultimately displaying uh, results. So back to this slide, looks almost the same, but really it's kind of just summarizing that we did build an app. Um, it gets the reviewer, that, that tries to get the reviewer closer to the truth, right, by curating knowledge from various um, other sources that we have, plus the LLM, uh, really, really early proof of concept that we're in right now, um, and uh, just really enclosing, as we've seen over the past couple of days, uh, talking about LLMs, uh, huge potential and opportunity. Uh, the first bullet point I have here really is low barrier to entry for just trying things out. So um, I think many of you have used something like ChatGPT before asking it questions. I think you can take the next step further and download the smaller version of any open source LLMs like a, like a Llama 2 or Llama 3, small version, onto your laptop. You don't even need a GPU in your laptop. It will take just a little bit longer. But you can kind of run the entire stack just to understand how things operate locally. Um, fundamentally, of course, uh, the process and the results that we're doing, showing, you know, showing this, these helper tools need continuous validation. And, uh, and, and ultimately, the field is moving really fast, as we've seen here. And you know, we'd love to further uh, the discussion any collaboration opportunities, and so forth. And here's just a short list. We meet every, every week discussing this, and um, it's the leadership made, that makes this work possible. Thanks very much. Great. Thank you, Nitch.